Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss the poem Hope is the Thing with Feathers written by Emily Dickinson and this is from degree 4th sem unit 6. Okay. Uh, to begin with an overview of the video. First uh, I am going to explain the poem and then uh, these three questions are discussed along with the answers. Question number one. How does Emily Dickinson represent hope in her poem? What qualities and physical attributes are given to this symbol? Second, Emily Dickinson's poem is about the importance of hope in human life. Elaborate on this statement with reference to the poem. What are the various images used by Dickinson to represent times of difficulty and adversity? How does this contrast with the way Dickinson has represented hope? The examination style answer is given for all these uh, three questions students. So that answer will be relevant to these uh, three questions you can use it in your uh, writing so to begin with uh, there are some pre-reading questions i always ask you to go through the pre-reading questions this is an entry level behavior students so what qualities help human beings get through moments of difficulty and suffering i think there is no human being without these moments of difficulty and suffering so what how do we console ourselves and what are the actual things happen to us when we really feel uh, uh, adversity in our life. Okay. And this is the American uh, poet Emily Dickinson belonging to 18th century wrote more than 1700 short poems. Can you imagine? But only seven were published in her lifetime. Her poems deal with the basic human concerns like love, pain, fame, death and immortality. So this is about the uh, poet students and this is very important a note to the student they have given Dickinson's use of dashes in her poetry does not follow the standard rules of modern punctuation so you all know the dashes the punctuation marks but she uses them in her poem nor does she use them in a con consistent manner for a specific purpose across all her poems but the actual use of her dashes is the dashes break up her lines into fragments that allow the reader to focus their attention on particular images. If you look at the poem, you can see these dashes which really break up the sentences, students. Of course, sometimes it is a kind of uh, jarring to the ear, uh, eyes, but there is a specific purpose. They say that uh, they allow the reader to focus more on the words and the meaning. The dashes create distance and disconnection between ideas, images that often go together. This is the inconvenience we all feel. The dashes also take the place of full stops, commas, parentheses and can indicate pauses uh, when being recited aloud. Okay, so this is an important note. When you look at the poem, you can see these dashes students. So this is the poem and see full of dashes. So hope is the thing with feathers. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul. So she begins with this word hope. Hope is an abstract thing. It's a feeling. I think you all know the difference between abstract and uh, concrete things students. Concrete things we can touch with our hands and we can see with our eyes. But uh, abstract things you know we cannot touch them nor we can uh, nor can we see them. So it's, uh, it's only can be felt. So hope is the thing with feathers but here this abstract thing is uh, compared with the living thing the thing which we can see with our eyes and uh, touch with our hands the concrete things this is a characteristic feature of emily dickinson students so she writes with this kind of uh, marvel okay so hope is the thing with the feathers that perches in the soul so where is this hope of course, we all know it's abstract thing, but it perches in the soul. It sits in the soul. So this word purchase tells that this thing with the feather should be, uh, could be a bird. So purchase, you all know, the way the birds sit, they, that is called as perching soon. This is a, the way the, they fix the claws onto the twig so that even in the night time they sleep, you know, they don't fall down. This is the way they said the perching is a kind of a, a strong fixation. So in the same way, hope also fixes in our soul. It lives, dwells in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And this is a tune. The bird is singing. Bird means the hope is singing the tune without words. 
you all know you all listen to the music sometimes you know the music tells us the mood of the singer or the mood of the song student without any words we can understand the same thing here this hope is a wordless tune you cannot find the lyrics but only can hear the tune that is the power of hope students and never stops at all see the dashes with um, before and after these two words at all that means at any circumstances at any kind of uh, difficulty or adversity this sing this song goes on and on so that is the first stanza students very deep in meaning the speaker defines hope as a feathered creature that dwells inside the human spirit this feathery thing sings a wordless tune not stopping under any circumstances second stanza and sweetest in the gale is heard and so must be the storm and not only the song is uh, has a wordless tune but it is also sweetest that means when does it uh, feel very sweetest in the gale that means in the storms actually look at this uh, contradictory thing students in the storm can we hear anything but here she says that in the storm only this uh, song is very this tune is very sweet she says that means in the times of difficulty this hope gives us some kind of re uh, relaxation it soothes us that is the meaning here students it's heard it's heard only in the time of difficulties or the storms and so must be the storm means very severe very fierce storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many worm so it it will even the storm is very severe it will not uh, disturb the little bird here little bird is the uh, hope that kept so many warm so means so many people got relaxation with this hope they felt warmth in the times of difficulties but it cannot disturb the, the storm cannot disturb the bird it tune sounds best when heard in fierce winds only an incredibly severe storm could stop this bird from singing the hope bird has made many people feel warm okay i've heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me i heard in both adverse uh, conditions like very cold land and the weird sea in the strong sea also i heard this tune means we feel hope in the hopeless conditions only we feel hope okay so yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me even in uh, very strong uh, circumstances also it never asked any anything from me so no um, expectations hope does not seek any expectation from us so the speaker has heard the birds singing in the coldest places and on the weirdest seas but in the speaker's experiences even the most extreme ones the bird has never asked for anything in return so this is the summary of the poem students hope you understood it okay these three stanzas now coming to the structure of the poem so the poem is one long extended metaphor written in three quatrain stanzas metaphor you all know it's a comparison similes and metaphors both are comparisons so throughout the poem you know you see this metaphor means declaration of the comparison hope is compared to the bird and she talks about hope but indirectly we visualize the bird so that is the an extended metaphor Uh, written in three quatrains quatrains means four lines having four lines in the stanza is called quatrain the first stanza introduces the metaphor and the bird song uh, this is the introduction the comparison is introduced the second demonstrate the bird's resilience so how strong is the bird and its tune means hope's tune then the third brings the poem into the more personal experience of the speaker because she has undergone that experience she is able to write the third stanza she never in extremity it asked a crumb of me in return it did not ask so it is the personal experience so this is how the poem is structured now we are going to answer these three questions students so though the questions look different but the answer which i am going to discuss will be quite relevant to all these three questions you can 
make slight changes but the answer will be quite suitable students okay so how does emily dickinson represent hope in her poem and so on the first introduction hope is the thing with feathers is about how the speaker imagines that hope is a bird that lives on the human soul the bird song lightens spirits and will persist even during harsh times this is the actually the introduction speaker speaker means here the poet how she imagines and how wonderfully she compares hope with a bird the abstract thing is compared to a concrete things to me then about the author uh, i have given a very elaborate uh, description students you can cut short it but if it is an essay type questions i think you have to fill the pages because in our university you know the quantity matters more than the quality so so this uh, this is quality and quantity students i have not given anything extra okay emily it is uh, emily dickinson one of the world's most influential and beloved poets might never have been known at all during her lifetime she published only a handful of nearly um, handful of nearly of the nearly 1800 poems she has composed preferring to keep much of her writing private means she is an introvert she didn't want to share anything with the people uh, but only a few uh, of the poems she has published but the remaining she did not publish if dickinson sister lavinia hadn't discovered a trunk full of poetry hidden in dickinson's bedroom after her death that poetry could have been lost we would have not read those 1800 poems now students because she didn't share with them only her little sister discovered all those poems then she published it this poem is one of a number of works by dickinson which works as a kind of extended definition uh, extended definition of metaphor okay throughout the poem you see the comparison taking a particular word and casting it in a new surprising light particular word that is hope she has taken word hope and then she has given it a new light often dickinson does this through taking abstract concepts and applying concrete ideas or images to them this uh, line you can highlight students in your writing which happens in this poem by making hope into a bird of all dickinson's definition poems means very characteristic poems this is probably the most well known the opening line makes the poem's intentions clear it will aim to explain how hope is like a bird and why that connection is important in the first place so you will see the metaphor being introduced in the first lines and if dickinson's life was extremely unusual for the time on those times you know most women were expected to marry and have children but she never did in fact towards the end of her life she barely spoke to anyone but a small circle of close friends and family she was secluded she didn't meet with anyone she spent most of her time shut up in her room relatively immune to what was taking place outside the wider world somehow she withdrew from the outer world students we don't know the reason maybe she was writing poems and writing and writing but uh, she never shared with uh, those poems with anyone so this is about the author students now coming to the context of your answer the speaker defines hope as a feathered creature that dwells means lives inside the human spirit this feathery thing sings a wordless tune this is very important wordless tune only music we can hear that means we can feel the hope don't we uh, not stopping under any circumstances and the speaker talks in universal terms about the hope bird hope bird this is a metaphor students it's in the final stanza that the speaker's authority to speak on the subject becomes clear how she talks about her personal experience that's why that authority to write the poem or speak uh, is given to her here the speaker relates how the metaphorical bird of hope helped the speaker through tough times so how she felt hopeful whenever she felt very um, broken or very depressed that time you know that hope was there even that is our common experience don't we all feel hopeful in the hopeless times students yes we can recollect it that was the first question i asked you to discuss in the uh, entry level questions pre reading questions but yet never asked a crumb in return that means in return the hope is not asking anything from us okay and wants to gently remind the reader of the power of the hope those three stanzas she is going to talk about the power of the hope student 
and the theme poet uses bird as a metaphor and she notes that hope is a feeling that perches perches is a firm sitting that means hope will never leave our souls and is always there even though hope is compared to something that has feathers dickinson doesn't specifically say that it's a bird but she says it in the second stanza students and the central idea uh, these are the side headings usually the examination pattern requires students that's why i have given it but personally i don't believe in these side headings okay i want only the main uh, meaning of the answer that's what the summary of the answer anyway let us follow the examination rules hope is the thing with feathers is one of the best known of emily dickinson's poems an extended metaphor this is the extended metaphor means the comparison is passed throughout the poem hope is transformed into a bird that rests within the human soul okay and it draws a symbolic link between bird song and the indomitable that means undefeatable power of the hope this is how we feel powerful we get the strength back students okay in the difficult situations even in the examinations also some students you know don't do well and they are worried about the results and all but they feel hopeful and we should feel hopeful so that tune that song should go on in our uh, souls okay in fact the song sounds sweetest when it is heard in the gale in the tough times only in the difficult times only the song sounds very sweetest means hope only gives us life otherwise you know we feel so depressed and some people go to adverse uh, consequences that is hope is the most effective in times of trouble that is the central idea and uh, yeah answer extends to this hope is a thing with feathers is a kind of hymn or praise a uh, hymn means a song actually the song has a, when you read it with the musical effect student it uh, sounds like a song you don't know actually there is a meter going on the uh, syllables are stressed and unstressed the way we read the poem the experts read it with the musical uh, note then it sounds like a hymn means a devotional song written to honor the human capacity for hope using extended metaphor the poem portrays hope as a bird that lives within the human soul and the poem begins by establishing its key metaphor that is hope is a bird you can extend your answer like this students and uh, the poem initially defines hope as a thing with feathers though it's obvious that this is a bird as confirmed in line 7 uh, yeah that is what i told you she uses the word bird in line 7 the unusualness of this first description shows that the poem wants the reader to look up fresh at hope to see hope with clear eyes and not take it for granted starting with hope is a bird would have the same literal meaning but would feel much less surprising she doesn't start telling that hope is a bird she gives an introduction and then in the seventh line only she reveals that it is the bird and she continues uh, and though hope is so essential to human life see without hope we cannot live the beauty of it uh, is it requires practically nothing of people hope costs nothing we don't pay money to get hope okay it is evolved in our souls and not a crumb crumb is a little piece it doesn't expect anything back from us yet it can literally and figuratively keep people alive that is how she beautifully describes uh, hope students as the as if the bird is singing and this hope bird purchase in the soul showing that the soul itself is hope's home so where does the bird live in our own souls hope is thus directly linked with the human spirit where it sings without ever stopping so once we feel hopeful hopeful and then it's uh, it doesn't stop throughout our life it is with us that is a loyalty that uh, hope has students okay this perseverance perseverance means continuous effect continuous effort is a representation of humanity's infinite capacity for hope that is how we are all living even even now also you are all stressed or you are all anxious with the examination but you have hope that examination paper will be easier question paper will be easier and you can write it that is the hope you all have that is how every minute we live students we live uh, lively okay 
that kind of um, strength we get only from this hope and here it is beautifully compared to a bird's song especially in the tough situations and the conclusion the message is that hope lives inside all of us it can encourage us no matter what trials and tribulations we experience that means hard times of course there might be times when people do seem to lose their strength but the poem argues hope still plays an important role in these situations the poem demonstrate this by gesturing towards the sheer number of people so many that means almost all the people who have been sustained by hope saying that it would have to be a truly sore storm means very fierce storm the life is like a storm it's not most of the time it is not a bed of roses it is a sore storm that could diminish the strength of the little bird that means the hope we may feel hopeless hope it seems can keep people warm even in the worst situation so this is the conclusion stone and so this answer will be relevant for any type of questions unless any particular uh, question is asked if um, what is the comparison of course if you learn this answer any short answer you can answer from this poem students uh, that is about the poem uh, hope is the thing with the feathers uh, and this and for the students who are interested in uh, extra knowledge this uh, two minutes i'll talk about the literary devices in the poem students the poem uses anaphora in lines 7 and 11 anaphora is a thing you know where the words repeat at the beginning of a sentence that is called as anaphora and the polysyndeton is a thing the words and but the conjunctions repeat when the conjunctions repeat it is called as polysyndeton and this uh, uh, poem you know you can uh, see this kind of anaphora see uh, what is the word um, which is and is repeated if you notice you know it is repeated and and the words that is repeated so this is called as anaphora so why do you why do you think the poet uh, has used these words or the anaphora technique it works to create an atmosphere of intense perseverance so when we when we want to thrust upon something on when we want to tell something very strongly don't we repeat the words we repeat we do repeat the words so poet also repeats the word to emphasize her point hope is the most useful when times are hardest in fact ants and that's form the beginning of eight out of the poems 12 lines if you see all eight lines have got this anaphora or the polysyndeton uh, okay um, and the lines in the final stanza that deal with the speaker's personal experience every line is anaphoric in other words anaphora is everywhere just like hope that is the beauty of the poem students okay uh, another way of looking at this anaphora is part of the hope words power is in its song which is a symbol of joy beauty and strength since one way of defining music is by thinking of it as the patterned organization and variation of sound so this is again a literary technique uh, she has used students so this is a little bit of uh, extra information i wanted to give you okay students hope you understood the poem if any doubts are there do not hesitate to leave them in the comment section okay that is a intense perseverance that is why anaphora is used students so eight out of the poems 12 lines it is uh, anaphora is used thanks for watching and if this tutorial made any sense uh, uh, do not hesitate to like share and uh, subscribe students it means a lot only with your liking the video get shared you all know it i need not repeat it anything okay bye bye for now let's meet up in the next video all the very best for your exam students take care